So, preachers, listen up. When you institute a satanic panic against a given thing, a record or a movie, you are actually dramatically increasing its box office potential. To a certain type of person, you're talking about a 15-year-old boy, and you're loudly decrying something as, this is dangerous. This is the newest, most outrageous thing. It's dangerous. You are, it's catnip to a 15-year-old boy. You're pretty much guaranteeing he's going to check it out. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you the thought process. Because a 15-year-old boy is, try, is looking. When they hear, oh, it's dangerous, they immediately want to try it. Why? Because it's a shortcut to being a badass. It's a shortcut. I can be a big, tough man. I don't have to do anything big and tough. I can watch this dangerous film or listen to this dangerous music. And your friends will even buy into it. Depending on how much people buy into it, the smart kids see through it. Yeah, it's the smart kid. The smart kid has been paying attention to actual reality. And he knows for a fact that if the movie was made by the devil himself, <laughs> starring the devil himself, and it was written by demons, there's still very little that an actual movie can do to harm you. So he wants to go check it out. The more you tell him it's dangerous, the more inclined he is to want to see it. Why? Because it's a shortcut for him becoming a badass to prove he's a big, tough man without actually harming himself or putting himself in any risk. We did the same. There was, I'll give you the ex perfect example. When I was in seventh grade, one of my favorite movies was The Warriors. The Warriors come out to play. Yay. Now, The Warriors is actually pretty fun. It's a pretty good movie. I was enamored with it in seventh grade, which is, you know, pretty much right for a seventh grader. But why I made sure I saw it was because a year before, my friend, this guy Dave, had been being hassled by some bad kid. See, we, the normal kids, took our cues from the bad kids. We were trying to become the cool kids. We weren't trying to become the bad kids, but we took our cues from the bad kids. So the bad kid was hassling my friend, and he said he was running him down on his moped or something. I wasn't there. I didn't see what happened. He was like, I wasn't scared at all until he started going, the warriors come out to play. Then I got really freaked out because kids have been watching that movie and doing really destructive things. That's what he had picked up on the media. That was the media story back then about the newest outrage. So I immediately was like, oh, wow, I got to check it out. <laughs> I got to check that out. See, the same thing happened to me years later with NWA. Same principle. Oh, this music is different. This one is causing people to do really destructive things. Same process. Oh, I got to check it out. I got to check that out now. <laughs> Why? You are actually the smart kid and you're paying attention. There is no way on earth a movie is going to hurt you, no matter how bad or dangerous it is. So the more somebody says it's dangerous, the more you can establish yourself, establish your own street cred as a badass, tough guy without doing anything that requires any risk at all. It's a shortcut to being a big, tough man. Oh, I watched The Warriors last night, man. Yeah. Whoa, you watched that? You actually watched? Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's, that's a certain type of certain type of 15 year old boy catnip and what you are doing is dramatically increasing the box office value of something you are dramatically increasing its street its its you know outlaw street cred I'm relatively certain that that's what happened with atheism well a lot of the a lot of the today's atheists were ex fundamentalists I bet you anything they were 15 year old boys and somebody convinced them Richard Dawkins is so dangerous all oh, that book is so dangerous they heard it 6,000 times same process I gotta check that out oh my so now they think Richard Dawkins is cool <laughs> because somebody told somebody somewhere told them 60,000 times that it's dangerous so they think it's cool Sometimes those things are cool. In the case of the Warriors, it is cool. In the case of NWA, yeah, it's pretty cool. I was, and, and they were pretty convincingly, you know, it seems ridiculous now, but when NWA first came out, I remember hearing Ice Cube, and he's such a good actor, I was amazed to find out five years later that he hadn't actually shot people. At the time, I was thoroughly convinced. You know, they'd go like, got him. I was convinced that those guys were killing people. I was convinced because it was so convincing. And the, and the album is like the character he played on the album was brilliant. You know, it was really, really, really convincing. I was amazed to find out that he was just like a suburban guy and wasn't, wasn't in gangs and didn't shoot people and stuff. And, you know, a lot of people were. 
It seems weird thinking back on it now, but back then, everybody told you it was the most dangerous thing. It's the newest, most dangerous thing. It's what everybody did with atheism. They didn't do it in the real world where I grew up, in normal communities, but I'm certain they did it in, you know, where, where if you're an ex-fundamentalist, they did it in your church group a thousand times. A thousand times. They said, oh my God, this book is so dangerous, it's so dangerous, so dark and scary. And you heard it the same way I heard The Warriors. Oh, it's cool. I gotta check it out. I gotta check it out. It's cool. That's why you think it's cool when it's not. I promise you that it's a reality to some people out there. Maybe not everybody, but I promise you. That's because that's how the process works. What happens? You, the smart kid, are actually trying to establish yourself as a, as a tough guy. You're trying to become a man. And you've been paying attention, and you know for a fact that movies or music is not going to be dangerous, no matter what. So the more somebody tells you it's dangerous, you see, the more you start to understand this is a quick shortcut to being a tough guy. Same thing kids do, 15-year-old boys do on a ski slope. You ever been skiing with 15-year-old boys? Don't. <laughs> Why? Because it's dangerous. It's actually dangerous. Because <laughs> they, they do stupid things to try and prove who's the toughest and the bravest. I swear to God, we did that. We did that. We played that game when, on ski slopes, too. The difference is on the ski slope, it was actually dangerous. You know, we played like 007, we shoot each other with the poles, and I was going over a jump. My friend, my friend went over the back of my skis and I came popping out of them, dislocated my thumb and hurt myself pretty badly. And my thumb is dislocated to this day. So in that, that instance, being a big tough man, trying to be the toughest, the baddest, the baddest ass was actually dangerous. In the thing of like, who's going to watch the scary movie? It's not dangerous at all. So the more that you tell a teenage boy, this is the, this is the moral outrage of today. This thing is an abomination before God and it's so dangerous. You are, you, are, you are totally turning them on. You are turning it into catnip. You are turning it into catnip. Think of somebody like Marilyn Manson. I mean, Marilyn Manson... He, got, he had a whole career out of this. He's not very good. I mean, he's not like Black Sabbath. The difference between him and something like Black Sabbath is Black Sabbath is actually talented. They're very, they can be really good musically. Marilyn Lanson is, as far as I know, I don't really know him that, his music that well. But, you know, it's just sort of sludge. Uninteresting sludge music. So what happened? He's, the, the preacher started go, you know, going, he's Antichrist. He's the Antichrist. And he reels himself as Antichrist superstar. You know, in a normal community where I grew up, nobody, nobody cared about Marilyn Manson because we saw through that stuff immediately. Nobody cared about him at all. But I'm sure in a Christian community, you know, to a certain type of person, he would give him outlaw street cred that he wouldn't otherwise had. You know, in a normal person, like, I'm the Antichrist superstar. And you're like, oh, wow, pardon me while I faint. <laughs> oh, my gosh, he's so scary and hardcore. But to the Christians, you know, you tell them this guy's the devil himself. And what you're doing is, yeah, you're freaking some kids out because they're, they're kind of dense. But mo the normal 15-year-old boy, you're going, he's going, oh, I got to check him out. I got to listen to that. I got to try that. I, that's, why, that's why they're doing it. You know, there's a song by Van Halen, Running With The Devil. And I've thought about that song. It's like, that's not a devil band. Some of these, some Black Sabbath, they did some devil worshiping somewhere along the way or devil something. But Van Halen, there's no, there's no reason for them to have a song about the devil except as a marketing ploy. I'm almost 100% certain that's why it's on the album. It's about running with, running with the devil. It's a terrible song. It's one of their worst songs. But why is it there? Because I bet you anything they were trying to trip out some religious group to give themselves outlaw street cred. There's no other reason for it to be on the album except as a marketing ploy. There's no other reason. They weren't the devil -y. They weren't like ACDC who actually seemed to like care about the devil. You know, Van Halen's a decent band, actually. It's a pretty, pretty good rock band. Underrated, as far as I'm concerned, musically. Um, Ain't Talking About Love is a great song. Um, one of their songs, the, the Summer Song, that's like the best summer song ever written. I swear to God, it's like this song, Dance the Night Away. I swear to God, it's like one of the best, it's, it's, it's one of the four or five best summer anthems of all time. It's almost as good as like Be My Little Baby. It's classic. It's a brilliant song. Um, old enough to dance the night. I can't sing it right now. Um, so why do they have a devil song? 
they're not a devil band because they probably, some producer convinced them to put it on the album as a marketing ploy so that they'll get protested when they come to this, they come to Cincinnati and there'll be a church group protesting them and they'll give them air, you know, give them free airtime, give it's a marketing strategy. That's the reality. This, this, this stuff is counterproductive. <laughs> it's, you know, you're, you're turning people on to a certain type of person. You are getting them way more inclined to check it out. So, anyways, that's all for now. Amen.